in the previous session, I showed you how to put the resources in the Gantt chart and evaluate their utilization. It was a three-step process starting from verification of the individual commitment, identifying places in the Gantt where there could be problems when tasks are being done in parallel by the same resource, and then identify the places where the individual commitment is over 100%. We do this in an exercise. We will look at the information of the exercise. We look at the precedence diagram, the basic Gantt we will be using, and then we will evaluate the resources utilization and the resources utilization in the Gantt itself. This is the information related to the exercise. It's the same exercise we already did in section 7, but now I added information about the resource Harry Potter who is working on the activities A, B, E, F and G. The precedence diagram and the critical path you still may remember from the previous sections and it's this information that we have to put in the Gantt chart which looks like this. We see again that B, E, H and J are on the critical path and now we have to add the utilization of Harry Potter to this chart. But first, we have to evaluate the individual commitment of Harry Potter. We see in the column Harry Potter that the commitment in all the cases is lower than 100%. So that means that all is okay. Harry Potter is not overcommitted uh, to the tasks. Now we look at the Gantt chart again and we put the commitment into the fields where the tasks are planned to be completed. We say 50% in activity A, 70% in activity B, E 25%, F 90% and G 40%. We also see that the areas of Possible problems are situated in period 1 and 2, where Harry Potter is active on two activities at the same time. One of them is even a critical path activity. The same we have in the periods from 5 to 8. Again, one of those activities is on the critical path. What we have to do now is to calculate the total commitment per time period. So what we do for period one, we take all the commitments in the column one and add them. We do the same for column two and we find that the commitment for Harry Potter in period one and two is 120%. This is clearly more than 100% and we have to resolve a problem in period 1 and 2. We can do the calculations for periods 3 and 4, which gives us a commitment of 70%. This is okay. We are below 70, below 100%, I mean, and we don't have to take any measures at this moment. When we look at periods 5 and 6 and we calculate the commitment, we see that the commitment is respectively 115 and 155%. And it's clear that we again have a problem in these two periods. For the rest of the period, 7, 8 and 9, when we calculate the commitment, it's clearly below 100% and there is no problem here. Now we have to resolve the issues. We have to go 
to the next session and in the next session we will find out how we can resolve these issues. Keep up the good work. See you in the next session.